Hi, I'm Katie Couric, and welcome to Eye to Eye. The conflict in Darfur has killed more than 200,000 people, according to the UN, and forced more than 2 million people from their homes. Actress and activist Mia Farrow has just returned from there. She told our Russ Mitchell she thinks most Americans do not understand the suffering that continues in Darfur. What do you think the heart of the problem is? Why is this continuing? You have a, a, a government, the government of Sudan, with genocidal ambitions against the black African population of Darfur. I mean, some would say this is a slight oversimplification because there are contributing factors, trade routes and uh, um, land, acquisition of land and so forth. But in the end, what you have is a genocidal government that isn't tired yet. And Darfur's genocide, this violence has now spilled across the borders into, into uh, reached well into, uh, into Chad and, in, and into Central African Republic. A lot of people want to know, I wonder what your opinion is on this. Why do you think the United States hasn't stepped in and said enough? We've heard really strong words from President Bush, and he's used the word genocide beginning back in 2004. That determination was made when Colin Powell visited Darfur, and he um, made uh, minced no words about who was responsible, um, the government of Sudan and the Janjaweed, its proxy Arab militia. But he followed that by saying, this doesn't mean we have to do anything about it. I'm paraphrasing. And with that, the government, our government, President Bush, has been calling it a genocide until very recently. Um, so despite strong words, um, there's been no action. When you look at the Security Council, on the Security Council sit China and Russia. China has huge oil interests, not in Darfur, there's no oil in Darfur, but in southern Sudan. So it has a trade agreement with Khartoum. And we have all kinds of complicated relationships with China. So I can only assume in a larger monopoly game, the people of Darfur are completely expendable hmm. and the people of eastern Chad. That's, that's the evidence after four years of this slaughter. This is a seminal moment for us. Who are we? And we are defined in this moment in our reaction or non-reaction to the genocide in Darfur. You said two and a half million people were driven from their burning. You know, we're seeing in Darfur, 90, 80 to 90 percent of Darfur's villages have been bombed and burned by the government of Sudan and their proxy, Arab militia, the Janjaweed. 80 to 90 percent. According to the Lemkin definition of genocide, it's pretty well complete. Two and a half million people have been driven out of their villages and are forced to live amidst deplorable conditions in these refugee camps. 230,000 have fled in terror into Chad, of all places, Chad, where now, in the last year, the Janjaweed have crossed into Chad. And a woman who had fled Darfur and had burned feet and lost her children and walked 10 days, she too clasped my hand and said, but now they're here. The Janjaweed are here. We can't gather firewood here. We can't plant here. We miss, we miss the planting season. So, I mean, what you see is a tragedy of such enormity. If you can leave people with one image of what you saw, of what you want people to know about what's happening there, what would that be? I was in an area called Jebel Mara last June, and the, the children were waiting with signs. And one of the signs that they held up was, we, we, we need water, we need food. And the biggest sign was, we need protection. And they had taken pains to write it out in English. Some, somebody had taught them how to say protection. And this was the plea from all across Darfur and Eastern Chad and Central African Republic, a, an extremely vulnerable population, such good people, good parents, extraordinary. I could only hope that if I were in that situation that I would have that courage, that determination, and have the dignity that I witnessed there. I've never seen a people like that in my life. But the plea was for protection. We could do that. We should do that. We owe them that. You told me that you're glad to be home, but you left your heart there. Yeah, I did. I left a big piece of me there. Mm. I've not met better people. And I think that, you know, I, w I would just implore everybody to get behind the protection for the people of Darfur and Eastern Chad. Yeah, Farrell, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you.